It's not something you see every day at the Montreal Neurological Institute and Hospital. An Egyptian mummy about to undergo a CT scan. We know that the mummies contain a wealth of information about ancient Egypt, about uh, mummification practices, about ancient diseases. McGill University's Red Path Museum is the current final resting place of three ancient Egyptian mummies. Barbara Lawson is curator of world cultures at the Red Path. The, these very bright colors are the originals and what you see here is a cartonnage which is, a, is like paper mache. It's made out of linen or papyrus and gesso and then painted upon. These are the original colors which is uh, surprising to some. They are very, very bright and also gives you an idea of, uh, of the preservation uh, capabilities of the Egyptian climate. This is so exciting, I'm telling you. I'm very happy with this. Two of McGill's mummies date back to approximately 1500 BCE. The third is slightly younger, from around 300 BCE. The mummies have been x-rayed before, but CT scans are expected to yield significantly more data. Evidence of trauma. He has a lot of tooth disease. You see, when you look at the possibility of having a good solid base of data available to a variety of researchers all asking different types of questions, it's advantageous to them. It's also a great uh, advantage to us and also for the preservation and conservation of the mummies we have in our collection. The McGill mummies are part of a research project led by investigators at the University of Western Ontario called IMPACT. The project aims to create a database of mummy CT scans from museums around the world. The goal is to make this high-tech data available to all researchers in order to enable comparative studies and greatly advance our knowledge and understanding of these ancient relics. This was a, a between 30 and 35, but it's a very elongated scan. Really? Yeah. yeah. Do you think it could have been squished? No, I don't know. No, 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 because the suture is intact. The skull never had a trauma. By using CT scans to analyze the mummies and not the traditional autopsy, these very delicate relics are kept intact for future generations to appreciate. So there is a huge gap because oh is where they go through, you that's see? Even, that's even bigger than our mummies. Were. That's right. They, they went through there, yeah. through the nose, and that's the septum amazing. is missing. Yeah. All okay. the basis yeah. phenoid is missing. Right the lateral wall of the orbits. That's wow. right. That's so they extract right. everything out of the head through the nasal passage. Yeah. 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 They, they, they suck the brain out with what? that. The brain was not considered to be of any great value human intelligence was uh, centered in the, in the heart, so that was considered the important organ, but the brain was, uh, was removed and it was not preserved in any fashion at all. Along with McGill's three human mummies, there were six mummified birds that took their turn under the CT scanner. One of the mummified bird wrappings turned out to be empty, another was missing the head. Data collected from these and several other mummy CT scans will be put in a database and made available via the internet to researchers around the world. It's one thing to read ancient documents, but to have a, the physical body of somebody who lived 3,500 years ago is really quite astounding. And to be able to, to connect with someone so long ago in the past too, is a very thrilling thing.